Now, four years ago, Marie McIntyre had difficulty swallowing and was losing weight. After watching an item on this programme about the symptoms of esophageal cancer, her sister persuaded her to get a checkup and she was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. Thankfully, she is now fit and well and here with Professor Tom Walsh and they're both doing their bit to raise awareness on Lollipop Day in aid of the Esophageal Cancer Fund. Tom and Marie, very, you're both very welcome to the show thank this morning. And Marie, thank you first of all for coming on to talk about your story. It's a very brave thing to do. Um, can you take us back to, now, your mother had esophageal cancer. Yes, she did. And I was asking you in the break, did you have any thoughts in your head that were thinking, gosh, I have some symptoms that are like ma'am, but then pushing these thoughts oh, away? Oh, absolutely. I pushed them behind. Uh, I didn't want to face it. So it was my sister that came to visit me in Cork, and um, we were having a meal, and she noticed I was having difficulty, you know, swallowing, and I'd bang on my chest to, you know, kind of get, get the down. food to move. Yeah. And um, she said, Mum, Marie, she said, uh, you're like mum. And um, so anyway, I said, yeah. I said, I suppose I'm a little bit, but I wasn't really worried. And I just kind of, yeah. And she said, you ought to get it looked at. Yeah. So anyway, she returned home. And um, one morning she rang me. She said, Marie, turn the telly on. Ireland AM have a, a spot on it regarding esophageal cancer. You should watch it. So I turned it on, watched it. And I thought, yeah, all that relates to me. So straight away, I rang my doctor, my local GP. And um, she seen me and um, told her about my mum's cancer and the programme that I listened to on Ireland AM. And it just happened, you know, from straight away she made the appointment that I would meet up with Professor O'Sullivan and um, it just, within months I had my operation and here I am today. Three years later. Three years Three, later. Well, it was four years ago. Um, my operation was four years on the four, 3rd of May, four years ago. And was, was your cancer caught relatively early on? Oh, yes. Yes, it was contained within the esophagus. It was a tumour. And um, it was surprising that it, I was so early. So if it hadn't been maybe for your sister or even I watching know. the show? Yes. Yes, because absolutely. catching it early is what it's all about. What it's all about, yes. Early diagnosis and having that checkup. Yeah. Mm. Tom, I, I was just saying before we started the interview here that I remember doing the very first interview on, on, on this uh, subject. I, I think it must be about five or six years ago now. Mm -hmm. And I know I hadn't heard of it before. Mm -hmm. And I, hadn't, I wasn't aware of how high the mortality rates were. Mm -hmm. And I think I was probably, I wasn't alone in that. Mm -hmm. It is extraordinary the, the, the level of awareness. And people now are, are they're, mm -hmm. they're I won't say they're acutely aware of it, but I think they know that if, if esophageal is one of the more serious forms, mm -hmm. and in fact, um, um, there's more instances of it than, than lung and breast, no, not lung, but breast and bowel cancer. The incidence is increasing very rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, the incidence of this new, new cancer, a relatively new cancer, has increased more rapidly than melanoma or than lung cancer. And is this directly related to, say, modern lifestyles, or, you know, the same problems that we're having with obesity and... I think that that's certainly a contributing factor because it's related to gastroesophageal reflux and gastroesophageal reflux is related to obesity. But the Mediterranean okay. basin is almost free of this cancer or a, there's a very low incidence and really? we don't know why that is. We see, we think there's a protective effect of vitamin C perhaps, but, um, but you're right. Or is there anything that they're doing that we're not? Diet maybe, yeah. I think diet yeah. and the, the, the high intake of fruit and vit vitamin C mm. would seem to be one of the answers. In Irish women over the age of 70, we have Irish women over the age of 70 have the highest incidence in the world. In the world? For that subgroup. Wow. You know, for that subgroup of women. And that's interesting because um, my, my my impression up to now was is that the, the stats were very heavily um, um, male, it was a male problem rather than female. That was a very, that's very interesting, now that, that's the way it was, and that was the old cancer, the squamous cancer, but the modern, the new cancer is the adenocancer, and that's related to reflux and related to uh, um, symptoms of heartburn, that sort of thing. And Tom, for people at home who are watching, and maybe we can have mm -hmm. someone as we did Marie, mm -hmm. yes. what are the symptoms? The main symptoms are difficulty swallowing or food catching on swallowing accompanied by weight loss. And especially if this occurred against the background of ha chronic heartburn, you know, people will come in and say, look, I'm a Rennie's man, I've been taking mm -hmm. Rennie's all my life. Now, Marie didn't have that. Mm -hmm. But any food catching at all, if, it's, if it occurs over a day or two or three, and I think to take up on your point, Mark, the, the, apart from programs like this and occasions like this and for the OCF Lollipop mm -hmm. Day, there is no organization mm -hmm. whose role it is in Ireland 
to inform the public of symptoms of any cancer. Uh, it's not the rule of the Department of Health or the Irish Cancer Society, and we spend a huge budget on the treatment of cancer once it's diagnosed, about uh, about a quarter of our entire health budget. But little or nothing on the education. But little or, no, or nothing on advising people beforehand. So it's, it's huge, Chris, isn't it? Yes. Can I go back to, to, to esophageal here, here Tom? Um, how quickly will the symptoms manifest? I mean, if you're unlucky enough to have the condition, mm. how quickly will you know that there's something wrong? Uh, I think, well, sometimes the condition is picked up and increasingly now, increasingly now it's picked up on people on surveillance programs. People who have been uh, diagnosed with chronic heartburn, they go to their doctor, they're referred for endoscopy and they're found to have Barrett's. Barrett's esophagus is a change in the lining and if, if you pick it up at that stage you can monitor it, you can put the person on a surveillance program and we've diagnosed many people recently on our surveillance program. There's a change that they go through from Barrett's to dysplasia and then to carcinoma and if you can get it at that stage that's that's magnificent and once it once this gets hold though <clears throat> it moves very rapidly mm. it does and and if it's advanced then there's little or no well th that's survive. not true because the combination then of chemotherapy and radiotherapy uh, can sterilize the tumor and now we have another advance if you like in that in older people who wouldn't tolerate the operation so well the combination of chemotherapy and radiotherapy alone can sterilize that disease in about one third of patients who don't have advanced disease. So just That's to finish Marie, for people who are watching at home who might be thinking oh, I'm ticking a few boxes there what would you say to them? I'd say go to your GP have yourself checked very important. It could save your um, life. Absolutely. Maureen, thank, thank you, you so very much. Yeah, you're here. So that's you're here. The yes. living proof of it. I am the living proof. <laughs> thank you so much, thank Marie, you. and thank you, Tom. Okay, let's go outside now to uh, Anna. Well, it's a testosterone-fueled environment out here this morning. The madness continues. 